On this episode of the podcast, I'm going to be taking your calls. Also, it's episode 50. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Luke Who's Talking Podcast, the 50th. And as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be taking your calls. So you can call me 1-800-STORY. That is 1-800-STORY. Give us a call, and uh, yeah, let's see, uh, let's see what goes on. Anyway, now let's go to the phones right now. We've got uh, Bandrew on the line from podcast. It's Bandrew. Uh, what do you got for us out there? Hello? Hi. Who is this? It's uh, Luke who's talking. Why, why are you calling me? No, you called me. You called me. You want me to tell a story on your podcast? Yes. Isn't that what your whole show is? Isn't that your job? Well, and sort of. And you're asking of, me but... to do it, so you want me to do your show for you? Yeah. Uh, okay. Jeez. So this happened maybe 15 years ago when I was in a band. We were on tour, and it was one of our first tours, so... We weren't playing what you would call prestigious clubs. We were playing dive bars and really shady venues and sleeping at at truck stops and the hotels we would stay at. We would see people doing drugs and it was just a really shady and (laughs) scummy experience. Well, at one of these clubs, we were playing in a downtown location at a dive bar and We weren't over the age of 21 at this time, so we couldn't go into the bar unless we were playing. So we got to the club at around 8 p.m., and we didn't go on until 11 or 12 p.m., so we were just hanging out outside. And this happened to be in the methy area of the city. (laughs) So outside, there were just a bunch of people dealing and doing drugs. and. After we got out of the club, it was maybe 12.30 or 1, and that is when all of the drug activity had picked up. So everybody was out there, and they were starting to do the drugs that they had been acquiring all day. And we found out that our van had died. We couldn't get it to turn over, so we needed somebody to jump it. Somebody there had a car, and they were letting us use their vehicle to jump our van, However, the jumper cables would not stay on the posts of the battery. One of the meth heads, I guess, was a mechanic? Or maybe not, based on this story. But he came up and was willing to hold the jumper cables in place while we tried to jump the van. And every single time we turned the ignition, you would see him shake a little bit. So (laughs) we would turn the ignition and he would just shake. And... After about three times, we said, hey, man, are you getting shocked? And he said, yeah, I'm fine, though. I'm fine. So this meth head was essentially functioning as the jumper cable between this other car's battery and our van's battery to get the vehicle running. So I don't know if that is a characteristic that people know about meth, but based on this experience, I guess it makes you a really good conductor for electricity because he did allow us to get our van started up. So let this be a lesson to you. Just don't tour to shady, methy parts of cities unless you want your car to break down and then have a human jumper cable. And also, don't do drugs. Drugs are bad, okay? (laughs) All right, well, thank you very much for having me. I mean, how dare you call me in the middle of my dinner and ask me to tell you a story? How incredibly, incredibly rude. News. Have a good one. Congratulations on 50 episodes. Keep it up. I love the show. I will talk to you later. Bye. See you later, Ben, Drew. And uh, I hope you didn't reverse the charge, because if you did, uh, anyway, we'll be back anyway after these jingles. Welcome back, everybody. Now, let's go back to the phones. We've got uh, Heather from Sunshine and Power Cuts on the line. Hey, so you know how... Things can take a little bit of time to get delivered. Like people in the world in different places have different delivery times for things. And depending on where you order something from and how they process the order depends on what kind of notification you're going to get along the way. So I've had a few little things come in the mail recently and 
it's been a very different experience from all of them. Some of them, they've been like updates regularly, like at each stage of the process. And you can also like add that feature on if you go to say their website and you can put in the tracking number and then sign up for updates, whether you want it, if there is like a delay or shipping change, like a notification change, and they'll send you an email update. Some ask for like a phone number so they can like text message you when there's an update. And that's kind of exciting because like there's a one particular group and they'll say, today's the day, like today's the day you can expect your parcel. And that's really exciting because there's been like a onboarding scan from somewhere. And so they know it's out for delivery. I guess it's the out for delivery scan for the day. And then there are ones where you don't know where the parcel is. And that's really frustrating. <laughs> and I had that a little while back uh, earlier this year when I was trying to order some computer parts to build my own computer. And I know that you've done that recently and it's a whole experience, but Sometimes we can't order the stuff locally, and I don't know if it's the same for you, but it is here. And so I ordered these things from afar, and they didn't really arrive on time. And it was a little bit tricky, because quite nerve-wracking when you've got these important parts that you need for the build, and they're not cheap, and you don't know where they are. So I just wanted to share my story about different kinds of shipping experiences. There's not only just how the shipping experience happens and what kind of notifications you get, it can be how long it takes. So for me, I can expect anywhere up to a month if I'm ordering something from overseas, but even ordering something within New Zealand can take a bit, bit of time. There's a couple of things that I have ordered from New Zealand that turned up really fast. Uh, one of them was my C920 camera that turned up way quicker than I expected it to within a couple of days. And then there's click to collect now and all of these other different options for ordering things. But yeah, <laughs> I like the experience when you do get updates on what's happening, whether that be by email or by text message, if you're willing to give that information away. It does help because if I wasn't home for whatever reason, they could like contact you and say where it is. And then, yeah, the time that you have to wait and... The ones where they tell you that it's out for delivery that day and today's the day to expect it, they're my favourite. Until next time, have a good one. Well, thanks, Heather. And uh, giving us a full rundown on the postage experience. I mean, what's the longest you ever had to wait for a parcel, Heather? <phone rings> oh, she's... No, oh, she's gone. Oh. Anyway, we'll be back after uh, this jingle because that's how the show works. Okay, now we're going to talk about the film. So it's been a little while since we talked about um, movies I've been watching because I've had a little bit of trouble with my Plex server. And uh, so I uninstalled that off of my network storage and installed the server on my PC. And that seems to be working. So I've watched about nine films up to this point to try and catch up on um, being a bit behind. Because, of course, you know, I've got a goal to watch 100 movies this year. I think of about... 27, 28 or so. Anyway, so I've watched nine films, so I'll just I'll go through them as quick as I can. First one was Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Three stars I gave that. Pretty fun and, um, yeah, not bad at all. Anyway, then I watched Westworld from 1973. Two stars. Had some problems with it. It was just, I don't know, a little bit. Uh, I, I wonder how it compares, though, to the TV show. That'd be interesting. I guess. So Westworld, I gave that a two. And then I watched Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, so pretty much Ace Ventura too. Um, I gave that two and a half stars. Not as good as the first one. Um, and just the level of, like, there's some ridiculous little gags in the first movie. And then in, in the second, I just escalate them just a bit too much. Uh, and then I watched We Were Soldiers from 2002. Four stars for that. Pretty good, solid movie. Mel Gibson in it before he was crazy Mel. Um, and just a pretty decent war film. If you're into war movies, pretty decent. Now, the next couple of movies, there's going to be some more war ones. So I, I think like f something like four out of the next five are war films or something like that. Anyway, next of all, 2010, 2010's Alice in Wonderland, two and a half stars I gave that. Johnny Depp's a pretty decent Mad Hatter because I think he is a bit crazy. But I'll I tell you something. Anne Hathaway, though, as the White Queen, she legit 
looks dodgy. I mean, she looks, yep, yeah, bit sus. Anyway, so I gave Alice in Wonderland two and a half. Visually, it's very nice. It's like very interesting to look at and very colourful. Um, well, besides events at the end, but um, yes, Alice in Wonderland two and a half. Then I watched uh, War Horse 2011. Directed by Senor Spielberg. I gave it three stars. I think it's very interesting to have a movie sort of based around a horse um, that that was sold off and, and went to a war. I, I, and I've, I've mentioned this in, in my review. You can check them out if you go to the link in the, in the description. But when I was in London, there was a very big memorial there. And there was various big um, statues of animals. There was um, a donkey, a horse. There was a dog. Um, I think there was a camel and some other uh, animals, and they were sort of scattered a little, like they were grouped, but they were a little bit scattered. And they were all walking towards this big sort of, um, it wasn't marble, but this big sort of sandstony big wall, and it said, animals in war, they had no choice. And I thought that was really great that there's a war memorial or some sort of memorial for the animals, because we don't think about them and what they see and... You know, they deal with PTSD and those things as well. So, um, yeah. Anyway, now, uh, the next movie, All Quiet on the Western Front. Now, this movie is from 1930. I gave that a four, four stars. Now, this movie is 90 years old, but it is it is very good. It is... I think if you want to teach somebody how to make a film, get them to watch this movie because it doesn't have any CGI. It doesn't have any fancy trick camera shots or anything like that. And, you know, there's explosions and things that are happening in it. And all that stuff is actually happening because that's how it had to be done in in um, 1930. This movie was probably made 1928, uh, 29, and it was released in 1930. But, you know, <clears throat> so it's very interesting to look at it um, like that. It is black and white, but it's not bad. It's it's very good quality, at least the copy I watched. The next, we've got Wanted from 2008. I gave that two stars because it's pretty dumb, pretty brainless movie. Now, I've, I've thought about this. This is interesting. If you got somebody who had never seen a movie before and you got them to watch All Quiet on the Western Front and then you got them to watch Wanted, with no other context... The if you were just going on quality of like have has film gotten better in the seventy eight years between these two films, you would have to say no, it has gotten worse because wanted is pretty average. Two stars for that. Um, you know, Morgan Freeman and Angelina Jolie are obviously only in the movie to get a check because they're not in it because the movie is a good movie. They're in it just to get a couple of bucks. And then I watched uh, American Gangster from 2007. Four stars. Very good. I thought it was very good, very very interesting. Um, Russell Crowe does a great job. And uh, what's his name? Denzel Washington. Once again, he's he is very good. And it's interesting that these two characters... Like, you got the crime kingpin, as it were, of Denzel Washington, and then you've got the straight cop of, um, uh, what's his name? Russell Crowe. And those two characters are, you know, Russell Crowe's investigating Denzel Washington. And, you know, there is really a clear A and B story. And the two don't even really... Well, they don't really even meet until very much the last third or so of the movie. So it's interesting that, you know, because sometimes you might watch a movie, some, like it's investigating somebody's after somebody, and the person who's being chased knows who's after them. But if that doesn't really happen in this movie. You know, Denzel Washington has um, dealings with coppers, police, but not specifically with Russell Crowe. So I, I think that's that's an interesting dynamic and anyway and then at the end they get together solve crimes and it, you know, it could be a fun spin-off really anyway so yeah american gangster um four stars on that 2007's american gangster so 
some very good movies and also some absolutely garbage ones there. Well, that is it, everybody, for this episode of the podcast. Look, I hope you enjoyed it. And next episode, I'm hoping to have a video companion to the podcast. But when you'll actually get to see that, I'm unsure because I've got all the episodes pretty much prepped to be uploaded and put onto YouTube. But because I've got so many of them, like I have to do more. Like if I do one a day, uh, you know, that's seven uh, episodes a week. So it's going to take me, you know, two months or so to catch up to the 50. So the video companion I'm planning to have, um, it will take a little while for you to actually get to see it. I don't want to upload, you know, 50 episodes straight onto YouTube. I do want to have some sort of, you know, one a day sort of thing um, until, but you know, look, I will catch up eventually. And my plan, at least with the video companion of the podcast is that I will just record. I'll have my camera set up, I will hit record on that, I'll hit record here in the audio, and I'm just going to sync those to the audio and the um, video up, and then that's it, there will be no jingles, there will be no editing in that file, um, of course, you know, maybe one day I'll get something like a Zoom L8, uh, L8 or the Rodecaster Pro, where I can do the jingles on the um because I have the, the the pad, so I can do the jingles like quote live, um, but at least for the moment um, that won't be a thing. But anyway, you will at least get to see me at some point with various jazz hands happening on the video. So look out for that. I will there'll be something probably on the internet about it. I'll send out a tweet or whatever when at least I've caught up to the video. So that would be interesting. Anyway, look, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for the calls uh, to my two callers. Look, I thought the phone might have melted, but it didn't. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>